Hey everybody, welcome to the Inner Gaze. This is Allie. I just wanted to say thank you for all my new subscribers. I'm up to 20. This is awesome. <laughs> I just wanted to make another video today because I wanted to talk about other forms of healing that I dabble in and certain things that have started happening, I guess, to me. Um, and I've been activated in a lot of different ways over the last couple of months. And so now I kind of want to just share that part of my story because if you are on a journey, um, if you find that things are changing for you in your life as well, uh, be it energetically or through various interests, um, like maybe you find yourself more drawn to Reiki healing, um, or yoga, meditation, um, various modalities. Um, I just want to say rock on brothers and sisters. You're doing great and you're not alone. So just wanted to share my experience because I feel like the more we shed all these layers of fear, the more we step into our true authentic nature and um, experience this connection with ourselves. And we are then in a place where uh, we're truly vulnerable and it's not scary. Um, and so I'm getting to a place where I'm just like, fuck it, you know? I've got some secrets that I'm not sharing um, just yet. But um, as, as far as my healing journey, I've, I'm finding that this is something that I need to start talking about more. And so, um, yes, I think where I'll start is kind of, I guess we can start with shamanic healing. Um, I'm a shamanic Reiki master. That does not mean I'm a master at anything. It just means that I've been attuned three times to master level Reiki energy. And what that means exactly is, um, I don't know if I talked about this in a previous video, but there is something called universal life force energy um, according to the Reiki practices. And universal life force energy is essentially source. Um, God, you know, oneness, uh, the energy that connects all living things, the energy of creation. <clears throat> it has many, many different names and forms. Whatever resonates for you is up to you. But um, universal life force energy is the energy that we all have access to. It is the energy that propels us forward. Is It's the energy of life. So... This energy, if you're attuned to Reiki, um, everyone has access to it, but if you're attuned to Reiki specifically, you become a hollow reed or a channel for this energy, which means that the energy can just come through your crown chakra, down through your uh, face and your neck and um, through your shoulders and into your hands. Um, it's not magic. I think, personally, I do believe that everybody can do this as long as they tune into it and intend for it. <clears throat> it's not like you have some special people out there who, you know, get to hang with that cool Reiki energy and other people just don't. Um, what shamanic Reiki is, though, is using Reiki energy to help guide and facilitate the healing of a client. Um, but the shamanic portion of it allows them to not just assist, but administer their own healing. Um, if you're a Reiki practitioner, um, Reiki healing is wonderful. Um, you're basically just putting your hands on people and, and you are guiding the energy to flow through their energetic body and wherever it is intended to go, it will go and heal. Um, and often it's a very relaxing experience for the client. Um, they might experience some tingling sensations, some uh, warmth. 
But shamanic Reiki <clears throat> specifically was something interesting for me. A, because it's the only modality I was ever drawn to. It's the only one that popped up in my life. But B, because it, it, it gives the client a lot more agency. And um, really the shamanic Reiki practitioner is just facilitating their journey. Um, what makes it shamanic is that instead of a Reiki practitioner just putting their hands uh, over or on a client to help guide the Reiki energy to where it's intended to go, um, there will also be a portion where there's a guided meditation um, or a journey where the practitioner guides the client into a beautiful place in nature where they can journey through their imagination to uncover the depths of their quests, you know, they can discover their spirit guides through this imaginary place, through their shamanic visions. They can encounter scenes from their past, revisit these memories, recreate these memories, transmute these memories. They can discover things about themselves and put connections together that help them feel more powerful. The power of the imagination is is incredible. Um, what's interesting about memories is that they are, they seem, if you go back to any memory, it doesn't seem anything different than remembering a dream. Like even if you try to remember this morning, if you close your eyes and what was I doing? Oh, I was, I was carrying Theo and I was, that's my cat, and I was taking him to the vet. And yeah, the picture is kind of fuzzy. It's not it's not crystal clear. But when a memory carries an emotional impact, like a very serious emotional impact, it does leave an energetic imprint on in your body, in your etheric body. So when there is an emotionally traumatic event that happens in a childhood or um, any point in your life. It does carry weight and it does get imprinted. So the same way that you could use your imagination to conjure up that memory, you can also redesign that memory using your imagination. Um, so there's some really cool ways that a client can actually revisit memories through their shamanic journey. Um, and enter that memory as an observer, as an adult, and talk to their inner child, um, give messages to their long lost adolescent and say, no, like you are worthy. This, this is not how, how you need to feel and I'm here for you. So it could really transmute and, and recreate memories. Um, it's almost like I guess it's almost like if you read a book and then that book is created into a movie and then every time you think of that book you're seeing the images of the movie is that that's kind of like not the best analogy but anyway that's the power of the mind and it's even more powerful when the client is doing this um, if they're doing this on their own that I mean they that's how they're going to heal themselves. And so that's really what the point of the inner gaze is to me, is about me helping people, being a facilitator of them healing themselves. And it's really an amazing thing when you think about it, um, how capable we all are to recreate our lives um, as much as they've really let us down in the past is they, they've really really been hard but it's about giving that sense of agency on a spiritual level mastery of the self mastery of our thoughts mastery um, the ability to really transmute anything that's gone wrong and to forgive and to understand why those things were happening so that's one way of healing um, I guess I want to talk about Reiki energy now too because energy, and this is just as far as I understand it, it's, this is not 
just take what you resonate with and leave the rest. But this is how I understand um, healing and what we're made of. So as far as I understand, the composition of our true nature uh, is we're made of light. Um, our soul is basically light or sound waves and this energy has consciousness. In fact, everything I think actually has consciousness. So when we are accessing universal life force energy, we are administering energy to energy so we can correct. It's almost like uh, a doctor for an energetic body. And using what we cannot see, the only reason we can't see this energy um, is because it's vibrating at a frequency that we might not be able to perceive with our own eyes. So, and actually when I think about the, the spirit realm, I don't have access to that. I can't see it. Um, I am starting to be able to sense and feel energy in a different way than I have before, but I don't, I can't visually see it with my eyes. And the way I think of that is like, when you stare into a ceiling fan, and the ceiling fan is rotating really, really fast, it almost looks as though it doesn't have any blades. You can kind of see the ceiling through it. If it's going really, really fast, it, it can almost appear invisible. If I were on a scooter and going really, really fast in circles and looking up, I might be able, if I were going at the exact same speed as the ceiling fan, be able to see the individual blades. And I think that's exactly how energy works. Um, energy is just, some energy is just vibrating at a much higher frequency than us, which means it's technically in a different dimension or field of recognition than where we're at. So, Reiki is a way to take light and administer light into light, the light body. Um, but there's a million other ways of healing. So I'm going to admit something that's kind of uh, strange. If you're watching my video, I um, was recently attuned to light language. And what that is, as far as I understand it, is the language of energy. It's a universal language, um, interdimensional spiritual language that takes energy and translates it into sound waves. Um, from a quantum perspective, energy, light, is just its patterns, uh, sacred geometry, um, creation in and of itself. If you think about the perfection of the human body, uh, of flowers, um, there is that perfect set that, you know, fractals in nature, these are all mathematically perf perfect creations and they kind of all follow this like very specific code. And I think that's what sacred geometry is. It's basically the mathematics of life creation. Um, it's the mathematics of energy, and it is the um, shape, I guess, of energy. So when you think about language and how sound waves percolate um, and penetrate other sound waves and bounce off, that is how um, when someone's speaking light language, or I guess what light language sounds like, it's, it's like tongues, basically. Um, it is able to heal through the energetic body, um, through the intention. So if I'm speaking light language, which I'm not going to, I don't think I'm ready for that publicly just yet, um, it's basically able to attract to whatever part of the recipient's energetic body is in need of healing. So it's not like it's gibberish. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't actually make sense. It's not a language, but it's, um, if they're trying to understand it, then that's kind of beyond the point. You don't, you don't want to make sense logically of 
light language because um, the ego would get in the way. Um, and so it's almost like a direct form of communication, soul to soul. Um, and, and that's how it's, it's inherited. It, that's how it is received. Um, language gets in the way of a lot of things, actually, if you think about it. Uh, <laughs> we overanalyze and we, we try to label things so that we understand them, but sometimes those understandings are misguided because they are developed out of societal implications. They're developed from internal programming, internal beliefs that are biased and un unreal, untrue. Um, so language can really get in the way of us understanding who we are and it can get in the way of us truly connecting with one another in the way that we naturally are um, with one another which is we are a one um, we are all part of this universe we are all connected energetically spiritually um, especially those who are really close on a soul level to you um, I do believe that there are soulmates and soul families that um, at, at one level of creation, they are literally one being. Literally one being. Um, and that's why sometimes when you meet people, it's like, whoa, you know them immediately. And it's like, uh, you're, it's like you're remembering them, basically. Um, so, I think that's, that's all I really wanted to say about that. Light language is another form of healing that I've been doing. Um, I just talked about quantum healing in my last video um, where the higher self is able to come in and energetically correct um, certain things. Uh, once, once patterns come into your awareness, that is the beginning of your journey. Um, it's not an easy road. Um, it should be. We, we probably make it harder on ourselves than we really need to. And I know I'm definitely guilty of that. You know, a lot of people talk about spirituality as being work. And it, it is a lot of work. I mean, you have to, you have to enter the world every day feeling a certain way, knowing a distinct truth, and sometimes entering a world that is completely opposite to that truth. And that can be really hard. But we also live in a time in history where the vibration of the planet is much higher than it used to be. And granted, I know that this world is still a really tough place for a lot of people. But you know, back in the day, people were killed for nothing, you know, and just for standing up against the church or something. Like, people were hung and burned alive and wars were happening all over. I mean, that was a tough time to live in. I'm glad that I'm not there right now. So, there is a lot more permission for a spiritual path than there ever has been before. Um, and so... It's okay to connect in this way. It's okay to say to yourself, dang, like, as hard as this has been, like, I'm, I'm getting pretty decent at this. Um, I feel much different than I did a year ago. Um, and even though I've encountered these really hard lessons in my life, I'm finally feeling freer of those things and more in charge. Um, and that's a place we all want to get to, right? I mean, we want to get through this work, this hard part, and say, you know, I wouldn't want to be where I was a year ago, so I'm, I'm pretty happy where I am right now. 
So yeah, I, I don't know. I think there are a lot of different ways that one can approach their own healing. And energetically right now, they're, it's very, very, very supportive of our growth. Um, we're in a time in history where the world is actually increasing in vibration and by our environment is existing just at a higher vibration. So it doesn't take much to achieve enlightenment right now. Um, back in the day, you'd have to like meditate for eons and eons. And now you can tune into this high vibration simply by engaging with the moment. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Sometimes it takes getting out of your head um, and just remembering that you are not your thoughts, you are not your patterns, you are not your cycles. You are one with everything else. And if you just quiet your mind down and focus on anything else, <laughs> focus on your body, focus on your walk speed. So if you're walking and you're walking through the park, take that walk speed down 50%. Just walk slower and tune in to the environment around you. Say your full name out loud three times. And focus on three different sounds. This is something my friend Melissa told me to do. Um, if you can parse out three different sounds while you're breathing, what else can you focus on? Like the moment itself is just perfect as it is. And there's no need to worry because you're carried and you're safe and you don't have to worry about the future and you don't have to worry about the past because that moment is perfect. And you can practice this anytime this thought comes into your awareness. It's not going to be every single day that you remember to shut off the brain, but it's the best thing that you can do for yourself. There's a part of our ego that is helpful and there's a part that's not. There's a part that was, is used for survival. Uh, don't go into that fire, you know, or <laughs> watch out for that uh, giant wolf or like beehive. Um, don't cross the road. Uh, remember to eat. Those kind of things are important. But the negative thought patterns about oneself and the constant worrying about the future or the past, that is not necessary. I mean, to an extent, you do need to be able to be aware of the plans that you make for the future. Um, we still have jobs probably, and we still have meetings to get to, but the constant stress and worry, think about how much blockages you get just from projecting your consciousness into the future or the past on a consistent basis. How much creativity and uh, awareness can you even bring in to your current state, which is always now, if your consciousness is in a completely different place? Um, you don't have much room for creativity. So when you're stressing out, and this is really hard to do and master, um, but when you're stressing out, you're, you're like not there and you're not receiving anything. So yeah, you want to be in the moment and you want to release the stress when you're consciously remembering to do so. 
and by doing that you can focus on the moment. So I think I'm going to end this video here because it's just like a mix of topics and I can just ramble for another hour and start to 25 minutes. But um, I want you to have a happy July 3rd. And um, if you can remember, focus on the moment. Thank you. Bye.